This is the Nikon Z50 mirrorless camera. I think it's a really great, but really stupid camera. And I'll tell you why in a second. So this is not going to be a review of this camera, but rather me sharing three things that I found ridiculously stupid with this camera, but more importantly, how you could also solve these. Now, this video probably applies only if you use this for videography and specifically for shooting videos of yourself, for example, for a YouTube channel. If you're using this camera for photography only, then probably you can skip this video. Now, I do wanna start by saying I really like this camera. I like how small and compact it is. If I put this side by side next to the Nikon D5500, which is an APS crop sensor. So it's much larger as you can see, uh, even when you extend it. So right now this is collapsed. If I extend it on the Z50, it's still very compact compared to extending it on the D5500. And look how large the camera is. So it, the, the difference is huge. So I, I really like the Z50. Um, I like how it performs. I think it's a really great camera, but if you're using this for videography, and again, specifically for shooting videos of yourself, for example, for YouTube, like I do, then there are three things that I found extremely stupid. And my first issue with this camera is the screen. So this is a tilting screen and the way it works, you can tilt it like that or like that, adjust it to whatever angle you want or flip it all the way like that. The problem with this is the thread for the tripod is below. So if you want to shoot videos of yourself, there is no way you can put a tripod over here and flip the screen. This means you cannot see what the camera is seeing. And I really don't know why Nikon decided to abandon their fully articulating screens, which they had on their DSLR lineup. I think these were awesome. You can flip out the screen, adjust the angle to whichever angle you want. If you're shooting from below, you can hold it like that. Shooting from above, you can hold it like that. And then if you're shooting yourself, you can actually see what the camera is seeing while mounting this on a tripod. The other advantage is also that when you want to put the camera away, you can flip this out, close the screen, and then protect the screen. With this thing over here, because it's not fully articulating, firstly, you cannot protect the screen, and this is a touch screen, so there's no way to protect this unless you want to put a protector on it. And then if you flip it out, you can no longer put this on a tripod or even set this on a desk, on a table, on the floor, or whatever you want. And I, I really don't see the advantage of that flip out screen uh, and why they would abandon the fully articulating screen. If any of you guys have any ideas as to why this is a better thing, please do leave it in the comment section. I'm, I'm really curious because personally, I can't see any advantage of that flip out screen versus the fully articulating screen. Now, fortunately, one company's stupid mistake is another company's opportunity. And luckily, there is a solution, and it is this thing over here. This is by Smallrig. And this is the second generation, which comes with a key over here that stows away magnetically so you don't lose it and you have it with you at all times, which is a nice thing. Simply what you do is you attach this to the bottom of your camera, tighten it, put the key away and what this gives you, so you get the thread over here for the tripod, but if you want to flip the screen, then you also have two threads over here, which means you can flip the screen and mount a tripod over here without it interfering with the screen. And I really like this. You also get two threads on the side in case you wanna attach a microphone or an LED light or whatever you do wanna attach. So. I think it's a really nice solution to that problem. It will allow you to flip the screen, mount a tripod, and watch yourself. Now, this solves that problem, but then creates a new one, which is the following. When you hit record, of course, there's that red dot indicating that you're actually recording. What happens when you flip the screen? 
you can no longer see that red dot because it's hidden under the body of this grip over here, which is a shame. If I hold the camera at an angle, you can see the red dot, but then when you hold it like that, it just disappears behind the body of the small rig, which is an important thing if you're recording videos of yourself and it's a one-man show. You wanna know that it's recording, otherwise you're speaking for 20 minutes in front of the camera, only to realize that at some point it stopped recording because it ran out of space or whatever reason. So then how do we solve that issue? So I figured the solution should be easy. Let's connect the camera to an external monitor, something like this. This is a portable monitor, but you can also connect it to a computer screen or even the TV. I thought that was an easy fix. Connect it to the monitor, I can see when it's recording. Problem solved. But Nikon had other plans, because it can't be that easy, can it? For some reason, when you connect the camera to an external monitor, you cannot see any display information on that monitor. You cannot see where the camera is focusing, so if you use autofocus, you don't see that little square on your face. You do not see the record lamp, you do not see the timer, you do not see anything. And I cannot fathom why that is. With other cameras in their Z lineup, you can actually change the setting to output full information on that display, but for whatever bizarre reason, you cannot do this on the Z50. Mind you, if you switch to photo mode, you can see details, you can see the shutter speed, you can see the aperture, you can see where it's focusing, but not when you switch the video. And I really, I really cannot understand why Nikon has opted to do that. Now they could potentially fix this with a firmware update in the future. I don't know if they will. There's been a number of updates uh, for the camera since its release. None of them fixed that issue. If you have any idea why Nikon would do something like that, do tell me in the comments. So then we fixed the tripod mounting and flipping the screen, but then we no longer can see the record lamp and hence the third solution that I found, and this is getting something like this. What this is simply, it's just a mirror that you can mount on your camera's hot shoe, like that. So then if you flip the monitor like that and adjust it at the correct angle, you can see the reflection in the mirror, and then you can see when you hit record that it's actually recording. So you can see it on top, there's that record lamp that you can see. So it's it's definitely a pain in the ass having to jump through all these loops, having to purchase all these extra things to make something as simple as recording yourself work. Now, Nikon does have the Z30 camera, which is more tailored for content creators, so for YouTube videos. And that one has a fully articulating screen, so you can uh, flip it to the side. That one also has a record lamp on the front of the camera, so you, there's that red light that tells you it's recording. So that one is perfect for videos, but that one does not have a viewfinder. So if you intend to use the camera for photography as well, it's less than ideal, and hence why I opted for the Z50, to be able to use it both for videos and for photos. Now, there is one potential solution which could solve all of these issues without the need to purchase extra things, and that is if you use the camera's Wi-Fi and the app, so the Snapridge app, for live photography. And what this does, it gives you a live feed of the camera, and it, it technically solves all the issues because you can see when it's recording, you can actually hit record from the phone itself rather than having to purchase a remote control to trigger recording. You can see where it's focused, you can change the focus point, you can even adjust the aperture, the shutter speed, the exposure. But of course, there's one issue. Again, I cannot understand why, but for some reason, you cannot use custom white balance with the app. This could be something you could care less about, in which case you got a solution. Now the camera does have automatic white balance where it would try to figure out the correct white balance. And there's also a few presets like daylight and shade and whatnot. Personally, I always use custom white balance. That's because I use a lot of different lights and colors in my shot. So the white balance is usually off. 
And the custom white balance simply means you tell the camera, you point to a spot that is supposed to be white, you tell the camera this should be white, so then it adjusts the white balance accordingly. And for whatever reason, you cannot do that with the app. You lose the uh, custom white balance and you're stuck with having to select either the automatic white balance or the presets. I've tried that for me, it does not work at all, but for you it might. So that could be a solution that solves all of these problems. That's it for now. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.